I am Norman Rushbrook and I was the lighting manager for the St Magnus Festival. It was on the production of the, the Sir Peter Maxwell Davis's piece, The Two Fiddlers, when it was done in the Orkney Arts Theatre, because I was involved in lighting there. And the, I was uh, com commissioned to, to do the, the lighting for the show, and I got involved with the festival ever since. So tended to be uh, a very few in number of locations like the Orkney Arts Theatre, the, the St Magnus Cathedral and probably the Phoenix Cinema would be and the Strumness Town Hall would be and everything was fairly basic and to begin with. We were doing the lighting in the Orkney Arts Theatre. We had a group of folk that used to help backstage and then that expanded and became known as the, the uh, St Magnus Festival stage crew. And it, just over the years it grew and grew and I think at one stage we had something like 18 or 19 members. Setting up the venues for the festival, which was what I was involved with, lighting those venues, and then the stage crew had to physically change them. For example, we did a, a, an opera, we did Carmen in the Kirkwell Auction, or the Orkney Auction Mart, um, and that meant converting the sales ring into basically a stage with putting in lighting and, uh, and rigs and all the rest of it. So, and then we also did convert a riding centre into a theatre for a, 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 a written play in Orkney. It was, it was written by an Arcadian and it was about a John Ray, a, a, the Arctic explorer. So th those two were probably the biggest ones. But then every year, if there was an orchestra after the year 1999, when the Picky Centre opened, we, had, uh, we converted what was a games hall into a concert hall. Just the ability to work with with the artists from all over the place and be involved in productions that you couldn't, I could never have dreamt of to begin with. I mean, you were putting on uh, Shakespeare in the Picky Centre. We were putting uh, opera in a in a, in, a in, in the auction mart. All these sort of things were just un unreal, really. The first time we went into the Picky Centre after it was opened, we did a production and then we had to change over. I can't remember what we were changing from and to, but it would be for a big orchestra or something like that. And at three or four in the morning, we realised that uh, this wasn't sustainable. So we had to do something and we insisted that uh, they changed the programming, so we got slightly longer to change. But at four in the morning, eating stale sandwiches from the day before and watching this, the sun had already risen by that time, and we were due back at eight in the morning, wasn't a good start. The, the mainstay of the festival has always been to involve locals in the festival, schools, um, local drama groups, local musicians, that type of thing. And I think that is its biggest uh, impact, as far as I'm concerned, on the community is the fact that international <coughs> artists are working alongside locals. Most of them found it unique because what they normally did, an orchestra would arrive somewhere, they would set up, do a rehearsal, do the show, and then they would move on. Whereas here, the orchestras were here for four days, five days, and instead of staying in hotels, they all stayed with local families. And eventually, local families began to know members of the orchestras 
and a lot of the orchestras came back regularly. So people would say, oh, I want Joe Bloggs from the Woodwind. To, and people could just gain that. And when we used to unload the lorry uh, when they were getting into Picky, the uh, first thing to come off would usually be tents and bicycles. There's quite a lot of the, the uh, people in the, in the orchestras all went cycling around the islands and some of them even camped in the campsite. They wouldn't have done that this year, but uh, <coughs> sometimes the weather was good. Again, it's local participation made the difference. It wasn't a, a festival coming in, doing its thing and then disappearing again. It had this local uh, empathy and, and I think that made all the difference. I would like to think that it's introduced uh, music, drama, to people who may, may not have, have taken part in it or even gone and seen it. I mean, not many folk in the north of Scotland will have seen a full-flown uh, orchestra. And when you first see that, it, you, it just blows your mind. It's, it's just unreal. So I think that's the biggest legacy.